Okay, here we are with Shadowrun Hong Kong. I mean, this thing just released. I've just downloaded it and just launched it. So I'm going in as blind as you are right now, other than the fact that it is a Shadowrun game. And uh, it's set in Hong Kong. This is the third. They had Shadowrun Returns Dead Man Switch. Then they had Shadowrun Returns Dragonfall. And now it's just Shadowrun Hong Kong. I don't know at what point they dropped the returns. Um, I know that there's some enhanced graphics, uh, enhanced cyberware, and uh, some other options. And then they've they've revamped the Matrix system when you log into the cyber, you know, the Matrix Internet type thing, visual representation of the of the Internet, 3D, holographic. So all I've done so far, literally all I have done, is I changed my uh, I turned off full screen, I jacked up anti-aliasing to 4x, and I turned the music volume a little down a little bit to make it easier for people to hear. That's all we've done. You can see some of the other options. we got extra blood and gore, uh, high-res scale mode, HD textures, volume, game difficulty. I'm going to leave it on uh, normal for now, etc. So other than that, I mean, we, we are going in. Here we go. Shadowrun Hong Kong. Shane plays let's play series if you like the game or like this video please leave a thumbs up and a comment um, and you can also visit my blog at shameplays.com let's go Shadowrun Hong Kong ah okay so Shadowrun Hong Kong so far that's all that's in here I can find more stories which I'm not gonna do right now uh, or I'm gonna launch the campaign it says Hong Kong a stable and prosperous port of call in a sea of chaos warfare and political turmoil the Hong Kong Free Enterprise Zone is a land of contradictions. It is one of the sixth world's most successful centers of business and also one of its most dangerous sprawl sites. A land of bright lights, gleaming towers, and restless spirits where life is cheap and everything is for sale. Uh, we're going to go normal. Uh, balanced combat experience. Hard would be uh, is for players returning for a second playthrough or looking for a tactical challenge. Um, I, I'm just going to go with normal for now. To press R to reload your current weapon. Okay, so choose gender. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy. Uh, let's see, human. Uh, elf, dwarf, orc, troll. Now, some of my previous Shadowrun videos, I've I've gone over what a lot of this is, so I'm not going to go in depth on this one, but basically uh, Shadowrun is like take cyberpunk, like take William Gibson's novels and Blade Runner and all that, and then mix it with fantasy. So uh, at a point in the somewhat near future, fantasy and magic and fantastical races came back into the world. So it's a blend of futuristic cyberpunk and 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 urban fantasy. So, I usually play a human. That's probably what I'll do again. Um, let's see. They get body and strength or quickness for the key attributes. Their key skill is closer range combat or bow, throwing weapons, and dodge. Let's see. A dwarf. All dwarves have plus one to willpower. Hmm. Orc, plus one to body. And then it gives what their maximum stats are. A troll. Uh, I'm just gonna go with a human. I, I just, you know, I'm. That's what I like to do. I, I, I'm usually a human street samurai when I play uh, Shadowrun games. And a street samurai is basically their far, fighter architect, not their farter architect. Pardon me. Um, and and they've kind of gotten away with class or gotten done away with classes. But the archetype kind of helps you think of what your character can do, and you can build from there. So you can be a street samurai, which is basically their fighter. Um, a mage, a decker is their hacker. You can do all kinds of stuff with computers and hack into systems. Shaman, uh, it's kind of like a mage, but with different abilities, you, you kind of invoke spirits and that sort of thing. A rigger uses cyber tech and you control like little robots called drones and you control them with your mind. And then a physical adept is kind of like what, um, well, kind of like their monk, like you, you've, You've got magical kind of martial arts powers, mental powers. And then done, if you feel comfortable with the way characters build in Shadowrun, you may carry your own character by mixing skills and attributes as you wish. Now, I'm just going to 
I, d I just like to be human street samurai. That's that's my thing. So let's look at uh, these portraits. And I, I'm pretty sure that these portraits, I've seen a lot of them, are um, the, the, the people who backed the Kickstarter are in these portraits. I, I saw a lot of that, that activity going on on Twitter saying, hey, look at my... Look at my cool portrait. So people sent their um, pictures in, I think, and then people, um, or, or the Shadowrun team, Hairbrain Studios, uh, adapted them to uh, the, these portraits, which is neat. So what do I want? I don't want to spend too much time on this. This guy looks kind of cool. Uh I don't know if I want to be grizzled or what do I want to be? He looks kind of cool. He looks really cool. That, actually, these all look cool, but I'm just trying to find one that would fit what I want my... That's who I used for Shadowrun Dragonfall. It's called him Quick Luke. I guess I could do Quick Luke again, but... Uh, he looks kind of cool. I said I don't want to spend a terrible amount of time on this, but since I'm going to have to look at this portrait for several hours, I think they said about 20 hours if you do everything in the game, then um, I kind of like that. He looks kind of cool. I like him better in the portrait. Here it just looks like he has mutton chops, but uh, let's see if I can get him better, get, give him better hair. Give him a little slip knot back there. <laughs> Some of this hair is crazy. I'm looking for like a little, a little top knot. Wow, that looks really cool, actually. Yeah, I'm going with that. That looks really cool. All right, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, continue to stats. Spends your karma, and karma in Shadowrun is, is basically you get experience points for doing stuff, and then you can um, spend it to uh, improve your abilities. So instead of quote unquote leveling up and just stuff improves, then you, you spend your karma in order to improve your character. So that is what karma is about. Pretty neat system. Uh, Shadowrun's, of course, this is based on a pen and paper role-playing game uh, from back in the late 80s, I think. Uh, I think it's on its fifth or sixth edition now. Okay, so body. Uh, quickness. I'm probably going to go with body and um, quickness to begin with. I, I almost always go with ranged people, so I've got 29 points to spend. So I'm going to give him some quickness. And quickness used to calculate chance to hit and it reduces the chance to be hit. Uh, dodge. Further reduce chance to be hit by physical attacks. Uh, I'm going to give him a point there. Uh, I'm going to give him a couple of points in ranged combat because that's what he's going to be about. I just, I always end up defaulting back to that. I'm going to give him a point in uh, body Make him a little tougher. Charisma. Increases the uh, calculated chance to control spirits. Increased chance to hit with offensive uh, conjuring spells. And unlocks etiquettes that affect conversation. So I actually, I actually want a little bit of this. Because those etiquettes are very helpful. Um, well, corporate, security, gang, socialite, shadow runner, academic. I'm going to take gang etiquette. I feel like this guy's got a gang background. Let's go back to quickness. Um, do I want pistol shotguns? Now the way this works is as, as you take pistols, shotgun, rifle, whatever, it, it, it doesn't necessarily make you, um, it, it gives you a chance to critical hit when using that kind of weapon. It doesn't necessarily make you better at that weapon, but it does unlock abilities. Uh, but right now I just want to, um, 
I want I, I just want him to be good at range combat in general and this if I do this it'll unlock overwatch which is nice so I have two points left which I'll probably save I have pardon if I'm going through this quick you know you're like whoa dude don't go through this so quickly um, but you know in my previous videos I've spent a lot of time on this I'm just trying to get into the game um, let's see throwing weapons strength I can't do that body I can't do that oh cyberware unlocks additional cyberware such as okay yeah I definitely want some cyberware I would like that uh, pretty quick pretty cool I'm actually gonna save these two points for now confirm uh, okay so I get another etiquette that other one was kind of a um, uh, a bonus one. I could be a socialite, a shadow runner, academic. Hmm. Seems like I took corporate and security last time, and that didn't help a whole lot. So I'm going to take shadow runner etiquette. I'm going to say that he's got shadow runner and gang etiquette. Confirm. First name. Hmm. I don't know. We're in Shadowrun, so I'm going to give him sort of an Asian name. His name is Hoi Nu, and his street name is going to be... Um, so what do I want to call him? Hoi Nu. Street name. Hmm. He had that hair. It's kind of... The roster here, but I want to give him something that's kind of Asian sounding. We are in Hong Kong. New. I don't know. Let's see. I had Quick Luke before. I had Red. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Hoi New. I'm trying to play off the new. I'm going to pause this for a second while I think it out. Okay, so I looked up uh, some Chinese versions of words since China took Hong Kong back over from the British a few years ago. Uh, and I finally settled on the Chinese version of hawk is ying. So, and I looked up deadly, quick, uh, fatal, uh, some other words, mongoose, badger, and I'm going to go with ying. And that, that is uh, evidently Chinese for hawk, according to Google. So he's, he's a hawk. He's a raptor. Now let me look at Raptor real quick. Men Quinn. Now we're going to go with Ying. All right. So that's his gang name when he was in the gang uh, was was Hawk. So. All right. And here we go. We're going in. Message. Uh, hi. It's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story. That if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. finish something I should have faced a long time ago. And I need you with me. I know we're not blood and we didn't leave things in a good place, but you and Duncan are the only real family I have. Please, if our past means anything to you, meet me in Hong Kong right away. I'll explain more when you get here. I'm begging you. I'm almost out of time.
Okay, so that was the intro. Uh, pretty interesting, I guess. Uh, I had assumed my character was from Hong Kong, but maybe not. Or maybe I'm originally from Hong Kong and going back. All right, so there's a lot of quick tips going on up here, but it's a hard landing. Raymond Black, the old man gave you a home once, took you and Duncan off the gang-ridden streets of the Barrens. Sheltered, educated, slapped sense into you both until you almost resembled productive members of society. And then you took off, left it all behind, landed behind bars for a time, tried to start a new life after that. It's been eight years since you've heard Raymond's voice, until out of the blue you got this cryptic message, a plea for help. Meet me in Hong Kong right away, and wired to your account enough new yen to pay for the flight and then some. The descent is rough. A squall comes out of nowhere, sending a solid sheet of rain punching into the suborbital transport. With a ragged shudder, the plane finally skids to a halt at the edge of Czech Lap Kolk Tarmac. An hour and an interminable number of emotionless security checkpoints later, you hail a water taxi to Victoria Harbor. Hong Kong looms ahead, pulsing with energy. Sorry, I was trying to check how much time we were at. And here we go. Hong Kong, Victoria Harbor, August 2056, monsoon season. All right, you step from the churning of the water taxi to the ponderous rocking of the docks, your stomach lurching at the transition. As soon as you're clear, the captain nods once and steers the small craft back into the harbor. The man never said a word, just handed you a worn brown duffel bag with him. When you stepped on board, filled with gear, some stiff new body armor, and a note, better safe than sorry, D. Maybe D stands for Duncan. Above, smog thick clouds hang low in the sky, reflecting the lights of the city in a nauseating swirl. The wind changes direction more than once, creating a heady stew of aromas, diesel, sea salt, street food, and filth. It's all you can do to keep your in-flight meal where it belongs. That doesn't smell good. Two figures stand waiting in the dim light of the pier. The first is an orc, lean, with in-your-face muscles and a jaw made to break fists. The second is an elf, one hand resting casually against her hip. Raymond Black is nowhere to be seen. Duncan, well, don't you look like crap. Duncan Wu, the closest thing you have to a brother. You haven't seen the man in eight years. Still as charming as ever. He grins. Green's not really your color, hoy. Doesn't go with that nice new armor I got you. As you open your mouth to respond, something shifts alarmingly in your stomach. A liquid, a bubbling sensation. Uh, body three, tough it out. Don't know what you're talking about. Must be the arbor, harbor lights messing with you. So, um, nice to see. Look, I, at least I'm, so it, it seems like maybe no matter what, unless you have enough body, you're going to puke. But since I have enough body to tough it out, I'm going to tough it out. Must be. I guess you still got some of your old fortitude at least. He laughs. Considering how much synthahol we used to put down, I'd be surprised if you can handle a little chop. Uh, so by chop, I guess he's talking about the seasickness. I, I don't know. Anyway, we got to go find Raymond. Find Raymond? I thought he'd be here. Where's the old man? I'm going to say, I thought he'd be here. Never showed up. He still got that same baritone rasp. Had it since he was 12. Wu developed early. Did you try him on calm? No clue where he might be? When was the last time you saw him? No sense standing around here then. Where's the meeting place? Um, if I say, did you try him on calm, or no clue where he might be, or when was the last time you saw him, those are all going to be kind of, you know, duh questions. But I'll go ahead and say, when was the last time you saw him? A few weeks ago, before I got his message telling us to meet him here. I'd been working a lot, so I hadn't been by the house in a while. How was he? The orc bows his head. His voice sounds far away. He's not the same, Hoy. Raymond hasn't been himself in a long time. Um, the Raymond that I remember was a bit distant to, distant to begin with. This is different. He's been restless, staying in his study, inside his own head a lot, and he barely sleeps anymore. I've been worried about him, but I haven't figured out what to do about him. He looks up at you and shrugs. And I didn't have a brother to turn to. Hell, wasn't too sure you were even still alive until Raymond managed to track down your number. The woman standing behind, beside him breaks in. We should get going, Duncan. Head back to the meeting point in case your dad shows up. Copy that, Sarge. 
Or copy that, Sarge. They're wearing Lone Star body armor. Looks like Duncan Wu's gone private police. Sarge? You his girlfriend or something? You his partner? I'm gonna say Sarge? The woman taps her chest with an armored finger. Carter. Seattle Lone Star. I'm Duncan's partner. And superior officer. She grins. I let him carry my coffee for me sometimes. Write my parking tickets. That kind of thing. I figured I could use some backup. Didn't know what Raid gotten himself into. And I wasn't sure you were going to show up. It's a, tough, it's a toss off remark, but there's an undercurrent of resentment in it. Hmm, well, surprise, here I am. Of course I showed up. You got something you want to say? I was like, you got, you got something you want to say? Nope. He shakes his head. Hey, look, I'm glad you're here, Hoy. Seriously, but I'm going to need some time to get used to having you around again. Been a while since I heard from you. You know what I mean? Memories of sleepless nights and lockup flash by. Wondering if you'd ever see Duncan or Raymond again. Wondering if you even wanted to. And then stepping out into the daylight. Suddenly free the fallout of some obscure corporate restructuring. A few hundred new yen worth of apology from your former jailers and a decision to start a new life. To leave the past behind. All of it. Until now. Say, I know I've been out of touch. Say, yeah, we'll talk about that later, okay? I had my reasons. Can we leave it at that for now? Say, we'll talk about it later, okay? Who stares at you? His goggles reflecting the harbor lights. Yeah. Okay. He scans the waterfront, frowning. Let's just find Raymond. He was supposed to meet us in the plaza on the other side of this pier. The sooner we find him, the sooner you can all have a big, happy family reunion over dinner. Carter grins. And the sooner I can find a place to get a drink around here. Darn right. Ahead of you, Hong Kong rises serpent-like from the sea. Government and megacore coiled together, writhing in their basket of institutionalized corruption. No one can tell where the snake's body ends and its tail begins. That's what Raymond used to say. Duncan turns and starts down the pier. Carter follows. All right. So keep the team alive and head to the meeting location. So before we're going to do anything else, um, we're going to go check in here and see. I've got two karma I can still spend. Um, this is equipment. He's got a throwing knife. And that's it. That's what's equipped. And he's got secure samurai clothing, which is armor one. It says damage for it has a re reach of 10. Okay, these guys have some equipment. Slog looks like I can't trade with them. And I don't have any side. Well, I like the, the little cyberware thing here. Paper doll or whatever it is. Okay, do I have any mission items? No. And I can save the game, load the game, exit the main menu. I'm going to go ahead and save the game. And I'm going to create a new save. Can I, can I type over it? I guess not. Okay. Or maybe I just didn't know what I was doing. Okay, so this looks like previous Shadowrun games. Where if something is interactable, you can go look at it. And you just kind of click to move. Fresh construction is expanding the harbor out into the water. Corporate interests can afford to create new streets. Scroll in, scroll out. One thing I like about the Shadowrun games is, you know, if something is interactable, it's obvious. Uh, you don't have to hit tab or, or anything like that to get it to show up. And, and I guess in some games it makes sense to do it like that, but in Shadowrun it's just a very simplified, streamlined interface. We have a locked gate here. The guard shack at the end of the pier is dark and empty. Duncan gives the data push, but it doesn't budge. Huh. Well, that was open earlier. Duncan frowns. Looks pretty solid. Say, shouldn't there be someone here to let us out or something? Guess what? We'll find another way to reach the plaza. Maybe if you bang against it hard enough, it'll open. I'm going to say maybe if you bang your head against it hard enough, it'll open. <laughs> ha, maybe. He squints into the guard shack. Strange that there's no one here, though, isn't it? Carter shrugs. Who knows? It's Hong Kong. Not exactly sure how things work around here. 
Come on, rookie. We can cut through the construction site. I hate it when you call me that. So... I mean, obviously, we're being set up for some kind of ambush or something. <laughs> can I... Oh, what's this? Security checkpoint. I don't know if that was there earlier. The gate is locked, but the nearby control panel appears accessible. Carter pulls it open with a metallic screech that pierces your skull, sending a new wave of pain down to your churning stomach. She examines the control panel for a moment, then throws Wu a backward glance. Looks like there's another way off the docks on the other side of this gate. I think that I can bypass the lock. Uh, intelligence 3, let me take a crack at that, which I don't have stand aside and let her work hang on let's poke around a little first i feel like i've poked around i'm normally extremely thorough but with shadow run games it's it's kind of hard to miss stuff so i'm going to assume that we're okay and uh stand aside and let her work carter fiddles with some wires and the door lock hisses open <laughs> got it let's go oh, all right uh, the game just say we're about to get into a fight which is just fine with me. If there's one thing that Shadowrun is good, it's uh, combat, glorious combat. They're shouting in Cantonese, which is a type of Chinese, and uh, I can't understand what they're saying. The group on the dock was fishing a package out of a speedboat when you surprised them. Now the package is at the bottom of the bay and the speedboat is disappearing in the distance. They close on you, red-faced and yelling. The light of the harbor glints off the, their weapons as they approach. The leader shouts something in Cantonese, but it's too fast to make out. You're rusty. It's been years since Raymond's house and the language lesson that wouldn't end. The old man never spoke anything but his native language at home. So maybe that's how I got the Ying name. Wu speaks with authority. His Cantonese is as solid as ever. He never let it drop. You guys doing some late night fishing? Tattooed gunman. The smuggler smiles. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa, we're fishing for, for jerks like you. Who points at their weapons? You're going to need some better bait. And all you're going to catch with that is trouble. Uh, whisper to Duncan. Seriously, did they teach that in Renacop school? Trying out your Cantonese. We're just passing through. Why don't you put the guns away? Shout in Cantonese. Lone Star, lay down your weapons. Hmm. I'm going to say that Ying doesn't He's not afraid to fight, but he doesn't necessarily want to just have a fight just to have a fight. Plus, his stomach's upset. So he's going to try out his Cantonese. We're just passing through. Why don't you put the guns away? Their spokesman laughs, looks at his crew. Hey, you talk good Cantonese, baby. Real authentic. He keeps laughing. Actually, you just told me you're going to crap a gun. Wu flashes his badge. Lone Star. Put the guns down. The smuggler squints at Wu's badge, then smiles at his friends. Never seen a badge like that before. Either it's fake, or you're some kind of security guard. Grass is rifle. Either way, this ends the same. I think he's done talking. So... You are now in turn-based combat. Each character on your team has an action pool. Spend these actions on movement attacks or using spells and items. Once your team's turn is complete, the enemy team will move and attack. Additional tutorial information is available from the reference guide, which can be accessed in the upper right corner of your PDA menu. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Um, action points. Hmm. I'm assuming that these are points of armor here. These little dots. This is reminds me of the Shadowrun Online, uh, the, the, the little dots thing. Maybe they did that in the director's cut of Shadowrun Dragonfall. All I have is these knives, which doesn't make me real happy. I have a phosphorus grenade. And I have a frag grenade. Mm. Strips three armor from affected targets. I'm going to run up here and try to use this grenade. I don't know how far I can throw it. Oh! I can't, I can't do that. Um, I guess I needed two, two APs to throw a grenade. I got four guys. I got the best chance to hit this guy at a 44% chance. And I missed him. All right, Duncan, what can you do? Let's get you up here behind cover. 
Yeah, they, they changed it. Like I said, I didn't play the director's cut of Dragonfall, so this may some of this already been, may have been changed, but they've changed how you choose your weapon. Used to, you had a little menu you clicked up and down here. Uh, let's see, he's got aim shot, single shot. All right, I'm gonna do an aimed shot on this guy. I had 10 damage, not bad. What can Carter do? She is a, a mage, it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna get her behind cover here. And increase targets to hit chance by eight to 12% last two rounds. I'm going to increase his chance to hit. And now it's their turn. Yeah, he broke her armor. Missed her, good. Dang, dang, critted my man. And he's stunned. I haven't seen that happen in any of these other games. No, I'd, I'd like to throw a grenade. Yeah, see if I can hit both these guys. I missed. But I still hit him. So I'll take that. Uh, Carter, what can you do? That pierces up to two armor. Heal wounds. Armor one. Mana ball. I'm going to do a mana. Oh, it's like a grenade. Oh, they both took 10 damage. Nice. Dropped that person. Uh, man, they are just messing Duncan up. <laughs> Duncan is it? He is still whammy zammy. Man, they're messing this dude up. All right, so first she's gonna pop a heal on Cheetah here. Okay, does it? Is it only good on her? Okay, so hold on. Let's go into our equipment. And let's use this on you. All right, so we got some hit points back on him. And now she's just gonna zap, dude. Missed. All right, 56. Man, he's no good with these with these throwing knives. Missed. Hit. That's at least something. Now, nah, dude's busting out a baseball bat. Oh. He's back up. You gonna have to use a a healing man. You why can he not heal himself? Can you not use healing packs on yourself? Wait a minute. Okay, there we go. And you are going down, dude. Or maybe not going down, but at least getting hurt. Okay, he's down. Nice. Twenty-six percent chance. I'm gonna move him so that he's got a better chance to hit next round. All right, Chica. You got in your spell book. You got another mana ball? Ten damage. Oh, he's throwing a grenade. The AI is pretty good on this uh, than in previous. Oh, I'm, my main dude's stunned. Hit him again, Duncan. Okay. Do you think those guys were Triad? Not sure, I don't recognize their tattoos. So Triad I think is like sort of Hong Kong or uh, organized crime. So that is going to be the intro. We're going to keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and save the game here. And we will keep going soon with the Shane Plays Let's Play series of Shadowrun Returns Hong Kong 
If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment on the video. That helps tremendously. And you can also check out my blog at shaneplays.com. Thanks so much for watching. Shadowrun returns Hong Kong.